Hello, Divya. Hi. Divya, uh, this interview which we are doing has taken uh, roughly what one month or so to schedule because you were yeah. so busy. I was traveling, then you had tournaments, and you had one Tata Steel, then you had Polish League. <laughs> finally, we are yeah. able to do this. Yes, finally. Yes, and but what a amazing month you have had last um, September. Yes, it was a tremendous month. Yes, September was actually a good month for once. <laughs> for once, what is for once? You won <laughs> Asian title. You, uh, you know, you won national title. So I mean, <laughs> what was so special about? Would you say it's like the best performance for you until now? Uh... September, like September, the events. Yeah, I mean, you played two events, right? Tata Steel, Chess huh. India, Rapid and Blitz, and also uh, the Polish Extra League, which is the Polish League. Uh-huh. Uh, I think Tata Steel has been one of my uh, biggest uh, wins so far because it is such a prestigious tournament. And Polish, well, yeah, I'm happy with it again, rating. Yeah, you get no, not just rating. You beat some of the best players in the world, <laughs> and and some games. I, I I want to discuss some games with you. Amazing, okay, uh, interesting games. Um, but firstly, this picture. You know, um, I I I so like this picture because <laughs> uh, it's you and there's Ju Wenjun, and both of you have won one event each. She won the blitz. You won the rapid. But also, like, you finished ahead of her in Rapid, ahead of Humpy, Harika, and so many strong players. How did that feel? Uh, to be very honest, I have not had time to process it because the schedule has been so packed. So as soon as I came back from Tata Steel, uh, I had other things to worry about, other events to play. So I didn't really think much about it. But now that I think about it, I think it I uh, more than the result, I think for me, the quality of play matters. So I think overall, I played good, uh, good high quality chess in uh, Tata Steel, especially the last round. I really like that. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's it's uh, it's a success for me. I, I loved playing that event. It was so exciting. And I think I played well. You, you know, Tata Steel is the event which I guess every time you're missing <laughs> out on playing there because you would be the next rated player. Yeah. And this time you got the invitation at the last minute, right? Because yeah. Vaishali was not feeling well and I think she pulled out. Yeah. When you got to know that, oh, you have to go, did you feel excited or you were like, I'm unprepared? I didn't have to go because I was already in Kolkata. Oh, you were for the camp? Yeah. Or? Yeah, yeah, I was there for the camp. Achha. So, uh, I, I had just come straight from Abu Dhabi. I had to submit my Shenzhen uh, like for the visa. So, I went to Mumbai for a day. I came to Mumbai for a day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. But I, it was not even a day. I was like four, mm. four hours. I, I had appointment at, I think, eight or nine. I submitted at uh, 10. And then I had my flight at two. So, I had to immediately leave for the airport. So... Then uh, I was in Kolkata when I got the uh, mail and my mom told me that, oh, I got this invitation and I was already so exhausted from Abu Dhabi and everything. I wanted to go home, but I was like, okay, it's once in a lifetime opportunity. Let's just take it and it'll be rapid, blitz. it'll be fun. No stress. It, I was wrong. <laughs> what were you wrong about? So much stress. <laughs> Okay, let me show you one picture to, to sort of capture your uh, stress there. Look at this one. <laughs> it's what you're doing right now. <laughs> it's like you say, oh, thank God. Oof, this is over finally. Was that the feeling? No, that was not the feeling. Uh, when this... Uh, I don't actually remember what I felt, but I think it was just relief that, oh, she drew, I won, I won the tournament. How, how much does it mean for you, like, to win such an event? Because, look, at some point you are mentioning that playing good games, mm -hmm. 
and you would have anyway played good games like you beat Humpy, you beat Harika, you beat such strong players but then Ju Wenjun if she had won you would have would have tied maybe there would have been tie breakers or something like yes. like that so yeah how would that have been different for you uh I think it would still have been a special event for me because as I said for me the quality matters more than the results so I would have still been happy that I gave my all and I played a good chess but of course, winning the tournament, you know, it gives you like a cherry on top feeling. So, yeah. Yeah, we, well, it was really something <laughs> to hold on to. Uh, also, when I when I spoke with uh, Anand, you know, we had an interview with him mm -hmm. about uh, all the players of Waka, you know, who are there. And he also mentioned that it's just unbelievable that uh, you won <laughs> that event. And also, I think uh, um, Sandeep, who is also the founder of West Bridge was so happy. I think overall, uh, the the feeling in India was that, you know, all the boys have been doing so well in um, like Prague had reached the candidates in the World Cup. Uh, Gukesh had reached top 10 in the world. And I think your performance here showed that Indian girls are also now uh, the youngsters <laughs> are, are doing amazingly well. I hope so. Well, you did it. You you uh, performed phenomenally. So let's have a look at a couple of games. Firstly, and I have uh, selected some moments from there. Uh, you beat Harika in the first okay. round itself of the rapid event. And I think beating Harika is very tough, right? Because she's so solid uh, in, in any format. So uh, here um, you played this move b6 not so uh, well known but interesting in fact even anand played it recent uh, i i saw he played it recently at uh, at an event oh i didn't know that i think at levit of chess he played b6 in one of his games i forgot to catch up on all the games i was mm. so busy with yeah but I this, this is that. your uh some some interesting prep yes uh yeah it was a one-time thing Hmm. But it's a good line, no? Yeah, it is definitely interesting. It gets way more interesting if the opponent knows the theory. But uh, yeah, she deviated a bit. She What she played was also uh, one of the main moves. But it simplifies the position, I think, a little bit. Hmm. And then we reach this moment. And I think, you know, I've been spending uh, some time preparing <laughs> for this interview and going over your games. One thing that I've realized is your sharpness when it comes to tactics. Uh, like, you know, you're not averse to taking risks and going into sharp lines to calculate them, even if it means like being on the edge often. I am always on the edge. Yes, yes. No, but sometimes you are in very tough situation. Like, for example, here, uh, Bishop H3, she played. Of course, now you are in in such a spot that if you don't take the pawn, she'll play BD7 and you will be yeah. in trouble. But still, um, to make this entire thing work, Rook B6, it was not so easy to see, right? Because she can go Queen C1, she can go Queen yes, C2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think once you precisely calculate all the moves, it's, it's an easy decision to make. Like mm. you can play it. For, for example, I don't know if you remember any, anything if she played Queen I think C. Knight B2. Yeah, yeah, Knight B2. And then, yeah. for example, Bishop E8. Uh, Knight D1, right? You yeah. have to take. Yes, and then take. this this move Queens. was, uh, I mean, for me, it was, it was like... Was it winning? Uh, no, for me, it was like, it's impossible <laughs> to now think what to do next. Maybe just move the knight or, yeah, move the knight. Yeah, Maybe. but then Bishop A4 check and I think White could be uh, doing well. I don't know. What would you take? Knight F2 is interesting, yes. but I don't know yes. if it works. Yes, Knight A2. Exactly. I mean, Knight F2 is a crazy move. Yeah, Maybe because, because <laughs> would, if you take here, yeah. maybe you want Rook B2. B2? Mm. Yeah, Rook B2. So maybe you would have found your way. Yes, somehow you would have. Maybe. <laughs> you would have found something. Uh, but yeah. um, she went queen c2 and then again you found this nice move attacking the queen saving the knight and once she took here you saved the rook and now you are a pawn up 
Yes. And then you uh, converted this into a win. So when you beat Harika, how did that feel? Because that was, I is it your first ever win against Harika? No, no, no. Uh, I think I beat her once ah, in a really? blitz game. Yeah. That was online or? No, uh, uh, I think it was Riga. Like there was uh, oh that grand the... uh, that yeah. Lindores Abbey one. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, going to another game, uh, which you won. This was your game against Nino Batsia Um Oh, I was doing horrible. Yes, yes. E6, knight f6, bishop g5, e3, h6. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Forget the preparation. They can mix things up. Okay. I, you know what I feel that you do this on purpose just to get <laughs> into some positions which are not analyzed or something, or or did you that, forget? No, no, I forgot. But that is something I'm capable of doing. Yeah, right. No, I was very surprised because you know all the time everyone's looking for these subtleties. Oh, let the bishop move here, then <laughs> I will take and and stuff like that, or you know what to do. And you are here yeah. just taking it. But I think you you landed in a, a difficult situation at some. It was point. so tough. It was horrible. I think it was just plain lost, and I got lucky. Mm. Yeah, I think this I game think... again. Uh, yeah, yeah, it showed your fighting spirit as well. Yeah, I think I wouldn't have survived. But the only reason I did was that because uh, I was quite low on time, she tried to put pressure on me by playing quite fast. And in that, uh, like, you know, time scramble, she made a few inaccuracies, which, you know, gave me the chances. Yeah, true. And I mean, in this position, uh, she's still better. It's hopeless. Yeah, really hopeless. Yeah. You, But okay. Uh, in the end, you you managed it here, Rook C two. Now it's okay. I mean, it's still fighting. <laughs> Not really. Like if you get your bishop into play, I think it should be still just gone. Ah, you, you that's why you played F six E five. Yeah, she allowed this F six E five, and after that, I was okay. I'll hold a draw. Then. Even till the last moment, I was like, okay, let's just take a draw. But then when I saw that, oh, she's trying to play for a win. I'm like, what's going on? My pawn is just going And then it just went to the winning rank. This one should have been a draw, right? Yeah, even here, I, it, it's a draw. I thought it was a draw. And if she just takes all my pawns, it should easily be a draw. But now but she's she started, coming, yeah. Yeah, she started coming with the king. And yeah, this is lost. Okay, I just wanted time here. Yeah. And then you moved around a bit and finally yeah. uh, you found the way to win this with your G-pawn. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so this was your second win of the event uh, against uh, another strong player. And then we go to the game. Uh, you beat, beat Savita. Um, yes. That game for me was actually there was one defining moment of that game because... It started off with you playing the Karo Khan and you played this line which is now gaining very uh, a lot of popularity, uh, Rook E8 and H5. And then she, I think she was well prepared uh, with long castles. I mean, this is just common knowledge. Yes, yes. But yeah. then suddenly, every, it seems like common knowledge, but D5, C5, <laughs> Bishop B5, Rook B8, were you prepared till here or what? Yeah, and then she played bishop e4, and suddenly the evaluation changes like completely. I I I don't yeah. understand. Maybe you can explain it to us. Like maybe c4 gives white an edge, but uh, bishop e4. Uh, I think the only reason it uh, changes so drastically is because when you go bishop a4 without c4, mm. you're uh, allowing me to go c4 and eventually cutting off your bishop for like you know a long time. And then your light squares are weak. The d3 pawn is weak. I'm so sorry for the noise. No, that's fine. It doesn't. Uh, yeah. It doesn't come so loudly. Ah, okay. So uh, the d3 square is weak, and also I think bishop a6 targets a lot more. 
mm-hmm. then uh, if it were if like if she had played c4 and if she had provoked a6 it would have been a better ver- version for her ah so this way now your bishop also can't get here yeah okay that's very subtle because now here can she play c4 now is it but now you should provoke a6 no ah, so now you will go like knight b6 bishop a6 yeah. you will try to put yeah, pressure yeah. ah got it very cool and knight f4 now knight b6 c4 and you managed to win this very very nice game actually this was between the two of you um cool then next win was against uh, your uh, another young talent of indian chess vantika and i think you always both of you have very exciting <laughs> games uh, whenever you play because yeah. i feel it's clash of styles right you are more yes. sort of aggressive and uh, this way she is more positional she is more sort of uh, correct play you like to uh, mix oh, up oh you're saying i play wrong <laughs> It's, yes not wrong but you kind of mix things up uh, a lot uh, while she is technically quite sound in a way so uh, here but you got a good position right out of the opening and so on yeah uh, i think this was at the end of day 2 like mm-hmm. the last round of day 2 and at this point i was honestly exhausted i didn't want to play anymore so i thought i'll just go into a simple and game where i'm a pawn up and i'll try to grind it i i was playing quite fast also i think because i just wanted to get it over with mm-hmm. uh so i think that helped to put pressure on her it was not uh, like i didn't intend to do it but it ended up happening and uh, yeah eventually the pressure like got to her right so here uh, she played queen takes b2 <laughs> you took here now you have an extra pawn uh, sorry no she played c4 instead of taking the pawn she took uh, yeah. then queen c5 here it went and you know what was the most interesting part about this game that the last position king g7 i don't know if you I know. checked it I have, know. you have you checked it i didn't check it no that he, or maybe you guys analyzed it oh yeah 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 i checked it i checked it yes i checked it yeah i so know here, i was i was shocked when i saw it yeah exactly like king f6 she played and you checked and you won the queen right yeah, um yeah. but if she would have taken bishop d5 yeah, i know bishop d5 and queen d4 it, it's it's a not, draw a draw or maybe you know it's not at all uh, it's like, very tough to win this you know yeah uh, maybe i would have been the time mm. pressure and everything but okay it's tough yeah but did did you uh, maybe you guys didn't even realize it right after the game i i checked it then i saw that but mm. i didn't realize it no yeah. it's very like you you can't think about bishop d5 come yes. on no and then queen f2 and it's not at all easy to make progress yeah, as yeah. white right so uh, that was your <laughs> win with vantika and then came i think the next day the most important game of your uh, maybe maybe putting it as the game of the uh, career till date is a bit too much no come but, on no, no but still i mean think about it right you're playing against humpy who's one of the legends yeah, of the no. game yeah i know and uh, you it was the it was the game that gave you the title it is but i wouldn't call it my career game because obviously i've played a lot more uh, better games and ah, okay. uh, yeah so i wouldn't call it but of uh, definitely game of the tournament okay but you uh, you played very well uh, let's have a look at this game i i mean you're playing black first of all what is your mindset with uh, before going to this game let me guess what your mindset is you are exhausted okay. and you want the tournament to get right, done right you think i'm exhausted <laughs> that's what you have been saying so no but tell us what did you feel uh i was feeling regret because i had just lost a round mm. uh and if i had not i had a quite a good lead <laughs> and for <laughs> the talks and not stop no <laughs> just it, it, for, for you it uh, seems very loud but uh, for uh, me uh, i can't even hear it uh, okay Okay. Okay, it's so, little bit but it also doesn't it doesn't come loudly. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Mm. Uh so um 
I had just lost a round and my lead was, you know, lessening. So I was sad about that. Then I, <clears throat> okay, it's not a great situation to be in when your competitor that uh, yeah, is the world champion mm. is playing with the white pieces. And uh, I am playing with, with Humpy with the black pieces and I have to win yes. to get the title. So I was not feeling great about it because obviously I could have just drawn maybe the earlier round and been in a better situation. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that was it. I was just uh, checking what to play. The line that I was supposed to play, I couldn't do, do it anymore because it was like, you know, quite solid. And I couldn't afford to be solid now because then it would just, you know, end up being a draw. So I had to find something. So last 10 minutes, I was just on the call and preparing and mm. checking with, some stuff. With the secret trainer who we will get to know <laughs> when you become a GM. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I was on call and uh, yeah, I just checked something very, very briefly and I went to play. I, I didn't have anything on my mind. Mm. And... Uh, in general, like, you know, a player whom generally whom you have grown up watching as the top player in the country, uh, when does that <laughs> feeling change from sort of um, you have that feeling of she's the best in the world, she's best in the country to now, you know, I can also match her. Does that happen naturally to you? Uh, to be very honest, it has never happened with me because as much as I res- as much as like I respect the players and admire them, I uh I don't I've never I don't know if I like if I want to do it or not, but I've never actually put them on a pedestal that they cannot be overtaken. Hmm. So for me, it was not so, that much of a big deal. It was just like I was playing another really strong player, and it would just be a normal game. Brilliant. Okay. That's uh, very nice to hear. And also, I'm sure it helps a lot of young talents who are upcoming on how to approach such a uh, crucial game. So, you played Queen's Indian, Bishop A6, C5, and uh, take, take. I think the opening was just pretty uh, normal. Yes. And you got a fighting position. Huh. Uh, I wouldn't say fighting. I had nothing going on in the position. And uh, to be honest, it was very hard to find plans. I just couldn't find any plans mm. for black. You pl- brought your rook here. You played f5, e3, queen e6. I think there was one moment where she could have played a move like uh, b4, uh, which was somewhere around here i think h4 at 6 95 yeah you yeah i it. think it was after that i saw before somewhere i don't remember where it was here you didn't want to draw right with threefold <laughs> like king f7 so here the specific like situation was that uh, i uh, check Jew and Zid's board. I, like it was live, so it was on a big screen and everything. So I checked her board, and uh, I saw that she's completely winning. Like no chances, she's going to win this. And uh, then I finally thought that okay, since I uh, Shovelova had already drawn her game, I can finally try to aim for uh, the first place because even if I lose, there's nothing to lose. I'm anyway. You will be second. anyway second. Okay. Yeah. So you made all these quick calculations in your mind while you were. Uh, I mean, in there's this... nothing to calculate. No, like you just see the result and... Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, but somewhere, uh, yeah. So it, I mean, in a way, you you can continue this game, Queen, and you played G5, and I think this is where she could play B4, which maybe was slightly better for her. Um, but she went Rook D1, King at seven, take take. Queen e5, King g7, Rook c2. Okay, I think at this point both of us were playing in like five seconds each. Mm. Mm. C4, King e5, and I think now it started getting very very tricky yeah. here. Yeah. She took, took, and when she took here, did you have time to realize you are winning, or you just? 
took BA two. No, no, I didn't know. I was like, okay, let's just go for it. L- like I said, second place is anyways confirmed. Chalo, kill it. Chalo, marte. And because it's so nice that when you go here, uh, you can take, and then it, this is this is very tough. Like bishop can sit on C yes, four. Yes. And... So, uh, she went check king here. But you had seen this check, or you had. Uh, no, I don't think it is relevant as well. Yes, because yeah, yeah, a pawn is queening, correct? Huh. Knight c two takes check, and now this. I should have gone knight e one. Like the knight was perfect on f three. Then what? Uh, maybe the just a six. Ah yes, yes, yes. True, true. A six, keeping the rook out. Huh? Like the rook is still out, but you know, the king trap feels so good. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, you went here, knight c, and then e six. Got it. And then knight c two. And bringing the king in. Wow, what a win this was! Actually, quite a amazing, amazing win. How did you uh, spend that evening? Like, because next day already blitz was starting. Did you celebrate? I no, no, I didn't do anything. I came home. I called my parents. I called my family members and. Yeah, I don't think I did anything celebratory. Acha. And then, did you ever celebrate such a big win or? Hardly, no. Because no. I oh. came back. No, I didn't. I came back and I had to leave within a couple of days again. So I didn't have time. Wow. Okay. So you finished this uh, tournament. You won it. I, how was Blitz for you? Was it good? Ah uh, yeah, I was actually fighting for the first place till the last round, but then I lost on time with Humpy. So it was, uh, anyways, a worst position. So I don't blame myself, but yeah, could have been better. Mm-hmm. But we take the wins. Yes, yes, we discuss uh, the the best moments in this interview. <laughs> so then we go to the Polish Extra Liga, where I think this was your first ever league event in your career. Yes. Yes. How did it feel to play in a league? Uh, and uh, I think the let me just show the the teams that were participating in that uh, event. So these were the teams that were participating. The names are a little bit tough to pronounce. Maybe there are English Very names tough. for this. Your to- your team finished ninth out of tenth, right? Yes, uh, we unfortunately relegated to the second league. Right. Yeah. We we can call your team Equity Advisors Krakow. Yes. Okay. So how was it playing in that team and uh, your first sort of team experience? Ah, uh, it was actually quite good. My teammates made me feel very uh, welcome, and they were very nice to me, and created basically a nice atmosphere. So I didn't feel like I was out of the place there. Like I was the only Indian in the team, so I didn't feel like I didn't belong here, maybe or something like that. I and uh, it was overall quite a nice experience. Chess wise, I think nothing changed as much because it's still one game against one person, so nothing as such. But uh, the experience and uh, seeing other top players from other teams competing and checking them games out, being in the same room. I think it was quite a pleasant experience. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think in general, a lot of players have put emphasis on playing league events uh, after a certain level. You know, all all European players play it and uh, they get experience. It's <laughs> a very also a stable way to sometimes gain rating. Also, gain um, you you get paid for the games that yes. you play, and so it's a very stable way right and uh, for uh-huh. indians it's not so common because we have to travel all the way yes so, yeah so so do you feel so, like uh, that we are missing out on something because of that or definitely we are definitely missing out because uh, we should ha- definitely have more of these league events and team events because they are uh, first of all they are of such high quality you can see top players from all all around europe playing them and you usually wouldn't see them around asia like if it was uh <clears throat> and uh, yeah i think they, they just should happen way more 
it's mm-hmm. way more convenient for indians if they happen here right. than to travel all the way and also uh, europeans if like if some indian wants to play we would have to negotiate a you know lesser payment or something like that because our flight costs and everything yes. is already higher you, th- and they your, usually... your cost uh, your uh, in sort of what you're going to earn out of playing yes has yeah. to be reduced because of the flight fare yes because of the flight cost and also a lot of uh, team managers and uh, the uh, the team bosses they prefer uh, europeans because it's easier to you know tra- uh, accommodate them yes. and their flight travels are less so yeah i think they should definitely be hel- held in india they're super strong do, do, does this thought come to your head that okay maybe i'll you know live for a few years in europe somewhere and then <laughs> i can sure. play this yes it comes yeah <laughs> because uh, because it makes it very easy right to travel to these yeah i think uh, europe has a lot of tournaments and it's easy to get around europe than to travel from india to europe every time mm-hmm. so i think it is better to live in europe for chess uh, standards if hypothetically you would ever sort of start living there which city would you like to live in have you because huh. you've traveled so much you know so many cities is there your favorite uh, one I don't have a favorite one. Mm. Um I find Greece extremely beautiful with uh Greece there are no tournaments and there are the issues so I it depends like what I'm going for. Uh, I believe chess yes if you are going for sightseeing <laughs> <laughs> you won't stay there. <laughs> uh chess I don't know which country hosts the most tournaments. Yeah I I don't know um, for when I travel there a lot I like Prague a lot because from the perspective of connectivity to other places and also uh the cost of living was not very high maybe it's one of the nicest I've cities. never been there Ah maybe you should you should also Hari yeah, Krishna I, I think lives lives there so yeah, in Prague okay. okay so uh going to this uh tournament we first look at your game against anna varakomska she is around 2380 rated and uh, this was your first i think first round um, you drew perhaps right yes i drew you drew against Zola, uh, jolanta zawardska and yes. uh, that event was like this that sixth board has to be a female player right so you're playing yes. against all female players huh. five boards are uh, can be yes. men or women so I'm sorry you played the exchange slow uh not very normal yes for you well, who can say what is normal what is not what you play generally i've never seen you playing much of exchange slow i mean my opponents don't play it against me so i don't play it against them <laughs> you know asking divya opening questions is a little bit tricky <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> she... <laughs> very very little you reveal there but okay uh i think you got a very interesting position but this um decision here to play e4 uh, was it prep or uh, wow okay that's insane because uh, bishop e4 she she took which is not the best right d4 is better yeah take take queen a4 and when she played g5 uh, did your eyes light up like okay now rook d1 is coming no uh i i knew till queen a4 mm. and uh, i knew the best move when i was trying to continuously figure out what to do for it because i couldn't find a solution to it and uh, she spent i think one hour so i was just bored on the board sitting <laughs> like this when will you play when will you play <laughs> and then she so played then g5 she played... Yeah, I was shocked. I I was not thinking, so I didn't know what to do here initially. But then I saw Rook D one, and it's just over for her. Yeah, Rook D one is such a powerful move uh, that you that you found here. Um, and then A six, Bishop G five was a nice because if she took the bishop, there is Bishop B five. Oh, in fact, you we, can just take Rook D seven. Uh, Rook yeah. D seven is stronger. Wow, and then Bishop B five wins. Amazing. Okay, so she went a six and then takes. She can't take because d seven is hanging, and here you took. It got yeah, a bit complicated, a bit. but 
I think no, uh, yeah, I know why I messed up. Hmm. Uh, she was like on ten minutes or so. I thought I I tried to employ the Nino strategy. I thought okay, let's play fast. Maybe something will happen. But yeah, nothing happened, and I got into trouble. Yeah, you got into some trouble, but you managed to survive. There yeah, was, I think this moment where she could have played Rook. Actually, C- even I didn't see Rook C five. Hmm. It is hard to spot. Yes, for sure, because you are threatening to. take this yeah and uh, f4 there is some 95 but it's still i mean it's very unclear um yeah, and with is, less time like i couldn't expect her to find this in you know 3 minutes yeah true when i myself didn't find it i was like okay let's go for it and so she went uh, rook c4 and then eventually you converted this quite smoothly after this okay so Let's go to the next game. You play. You also beat uh, Dinara Wagner, who is actually now playing really well. Her rating has yes. reached two four six eight. So this must have been a very special win. Uh, yeah, it was good. Take check. Uh, I I actually went through this game, but I didn't find any seriously special moment uh, in this one because. Come I, on, let me tell you the brilliancy of this please, game. Please, okay, please, please. That's this... that's it's good that I didn't say any uh, thing. Yeah. Next move from me is the brilliancy. It is the brilliancy. No, after this, this is the brilliancy which made her think for one hour. No, 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 no. After this, yes, this. It made her think for one hour, even if it was a bad move. It made her think for one hour. But were you like going to castle and then you played king e seven or? Ah uh, no. Uh, What was your I logic? King. So I basically wanted to castle, but I couldn't because knight c three was coming, and then the e six pawn is hanging. So I thought, okay, let's go king f seven. This is the more obvious choice. Yes. But then in some variations, I was. Ha- Having troubles with queen f4 knight e5 ideas, and if I ever move my knight to d6, there was there were some combinations happening. So I thought, okay, not even this. Let's go king e7. I can't see any flaw. Maybe it is okay. You she thought fifty minutes here for d5. Yeah, insane. So I think you have this ability to make people go into long things. Yes, uh, one hour <laughs> things, right? <laughs> knight c3, b c3. Ninety six, but it still looks very dangerous for you, right? Uh, this position. Yeah, yeah, but I think after like two moves, when you finally see the position, you understand that there is no actual danger. Hmm. Nice. So, so you are very proud of this kingy seven move in this game. Yes, even if it was a stupid move, I'm proud of it. You know, you know this famous game of Karpov Kamsky. I don't know. Kamsky Karpov. Uh. If I can show you uh, this game, it's very very famous. Um, it might take me some time, but it was the same move. And now the present day engines show it as uh, not so good, I think. But at that point, everyone was like completely uh, like, "Wow, what a move by Karpov!" So this was the game. Karpov was black, and they played this. Okay. black to play king is on yes with the idea of playing g5 so, i like it yeah so it's a little similar to your king e7 no somewhere yes <laughs> so but you are not inspired by karpo you just played it just like <laughs> that okay fantastic that's a very uh, cool game uh, and then we go to your next game this one is against um, malsev skaya who's also a very good player uh and i think somewhere around here started some very nice tactics you are white she took here you took on e5 for oh, card of this game fully or from this point uh uh The opening was quite weird. Yes, I, I I just didn't like you know this knight coming from d five to b four. I I mean it looked a little bit. Okay, weird. in my defense, I was very annoyed because I had prepared something else and something else happened, and uh, 
I couldn't play what I usually play because obviously she would be prepared for it. So I just thought, okay, let's do, let's just use a random move. And then we reached a very weird position. Uh, but somehow it got better. And she was also low on time, incredibly low on time. So I tried to capitalize on that. And it worked. Yes. And then uh, it was this, I think, typically uh, a game <laughs> where moves were a little weird. But I think when that happens, you feel more at ease because you, you really thrive in sort of complex scenarios. So here, bishop e5, knight d4, you took, king takes. I like b3 so much. B3 it's is... such a calm move. And, and it defends the rook and it prepares queen a1. And I believe she missed this idea. I mean, she's already... No, okay, she didn't have time to think. Oh. And I, the uh, main reason why I like this is because I found it in, I think, 30 seconds or one minute. It was very nice for me. Too good. Too good. This was really fantastic. Rookie 8 takes, takes, and now queen a1. Amazing. <laughs> f6, and then you just sort of made your back rank free. Rook a7 also was very accurate. And then you found this, and then rook b6, and then... Rook... Yeah, what to say? I mean, beautiful uh, sort of finish here. Yeah, I could have made it, but she lost on time, so... Yes, g4 was coming in. Yeah. Right. Uh, next, you played against Monika Sochko, a very, very <laughs> experienced player from yes. Poland. Uh, and we we reached this position very, very sort of equalish. Did you feel that or? Uh, I felt it a few moves ago. Mm. But here I felt already I have a little bit edge because my pieces are way more developed. My... Like, they are flowing, basically. And for her, it's hard to even develop her pieces. Once she develops, she's completely okay. So you went e4. Because if she gets e4, then it's a nice position. Yeah, she then it's a... Three. Yeah, then it's a problem for me. So you go e4, a4. And now, uh, rook a3. Maybe we can ask our viewers to pause the video here and think. You more. already asked it on your story. You already asked it on Twitter. You asked it on Instagram. How many more viewers you want? On to YouTube, ask? they have not yet paused. So let them okay. think. Hmm. So, but this this playing this move must have been fun. Yes. Very nice move. So, Divya, what's the move? Bishop D one. Yes, Bishop D one, sort of interfering, and now the bishop is hanging. Bishop D three. Rook C. Okay. After this, I will blunder. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but for me, it was because I'm just clearly a piece up and I tried to be over smart and I got punished for it. But uh, where exactly did you blunder? Uh... Like Bishop A4 was a blunder. Really? Yes. Why? What? What's her winning move? I mean, I'm just a piece up. Why, why go into... It's still winning. You know what? For... Engine gives this as the best blunder. move. Engine gives this as the best move. Bishop a4. Really? Yes. It also like... Uh, I mean, you you played the best okay, move. Okay, psychological blunder. <laughs> because this, according to the, the engine, it's just uh, the best way for you to continue. So... Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't even recognize that. So I was like wondering, where's the blunder? Where's the blunder? <laughs> Where did I miss it? Or something like that. But okay. Fantastic. So this was a very nice win. And you've already beaten mm. like so many strong players. But now you're playing against uh, Natalia Buxa. And uh, this is your story on Instagram. Yes. 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 And uh, we need to... Because why did you like this so much? If you could tell us. Uh, I think it was cute. This is it was cute. Because then, I mean, you are already way better, right? This position. Uh, yeah, it like became from a way better, like completely equal position to uh, a completely lost position in two moves. So I found that quite incredible. So it's, this is all uh, typical uh, Shweshnikov stuff. And she took here and 
I, I I guess this is not all theory, right? Till this point. I mean, I knew the ideas. Mm. So till here, I was blitzing, and here she offered a draw. I I mean, if she had played any other move, I would have taken the draw because just just an equal position. There's nothing much I can do. No, it's but queen d four. No, no, no. Instead of like, is instead of queen d four, if she had played something else, like maybe in rook d eight or. Oh. Yeah, something you know, uh, which protects the d6 pawn. I would have taken the draw because it is a draw. And queen d4, I thought, okay, I have nothing to lose. I'm getting the pawn back, and that's all I want. If it's a draw, I'll I'll manage to draw it. So I just went for it. Rook d1, queen c5, and now. Okay, queen h7 is the first <laughs> natural move to play. But huh. you played bishop e4. There was some reason for it. Uh, I don't remember now, but I I had something in my mind for not going queen at some first. Okay. Rook a2 takes king f8 and knight f. I I guess you just free up the f5 square, right? The bishop e4 move idea is that. Huh. I think the reason why I didn't go in at seven was that, like Bishop E four, she has to. She was again low on time, and uh, she wouldn't I, get thirty seconds. Just King F eight. Huh. She wouldn't get thirty seconds, but also it gives her more options for to like to think about from my side. Like she has to calculate a right. lot more options, like Queen G four or Knight F five or Bishop F seven. So that would get, like make me get more time. So I think that's why I went for bishop e four. Amazing. So rook a two, queen at seven, knight f five, rook f two. Because if queen f two, king h one, somehow <laughs> nothing happens. Yeah, it's just yeah. So she took rook f five, but now you won a piece. You gave a check. Again, queen c six uh, is is not going to work here because of king f two at the very least. So she went king king d eight check, and you have piece up. Wow! So uh, in one tournament itself, you managed to beat um, Anna Varakomska, Dinara Wagner, Alexandra Malsevskaya, Monika Sochko, and Natalia Buxa, gaining what twenty two elo points? Yeah. Amazing, and that too with the K factor of ten. Uh, was I'm so fed up with that K factor. I've been having it for three years now. <laughs> no, because uh, let me just show the viewers why. Because there was a point in your career in 2019 where you had this huge jump, and you reached yeah. 2430 at that point. But now, uh, Divya, if you see the worm, has finally gotten back to that same place where you were three years ago. um but this is way different right yeah i think when i made the jump i obviously was not uh of 24 30 level and uh, yeah it was a k40 jump so i think i got back to where i was like uh, strength wise and then i managed to climb my way back up also for one year in middle i left chess to study mm yeah that was The year when every time uh, I would see you or I would, like Divya, have you started chess again? <laughs> when is it starting again? And I'm so yeah. glad that you are you are back again. Uh, what's going on at the study part right now? How is it going? Uh, study part is currently a bit on hold, uh, and I have my exams in April, twelfth grade, so I need to start studying. Oh no! And it's again, math, it's come, so it's come against the exams. Hold. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm not prioritizing it over chess anymore. I think I'm just going to stick with chess and somehow manage to pass these exams. That's the spirit. Okay, let me not say that is <laughs> it, but okay, that's cool to know. No, uh, okay, I'm gonna top the exams. <laughs> but but you have a very important tournament coming up. You're going to Qatar now. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you're going to play the Grand Swiss. Uh, what what are your uh, Overall, any any expectations from your end? Ah, uh, no, 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 no expectations. I just uh, I want to play good chess, basically. That's yeah. all. Like 
if even if the results don't come and my games are good i think i'll be satisfied does this feeling that oh uh, that uh, you know i mean prag and uh, prag qualified to the candidates somewhere do you feel like oh if i win grand swiss i can also qualify to the candidates or any such thoughts cross your mind uh no if it's meant to happen it will happen hmm. okay fantastic well divya this is uh, very very nice to talk to you about your two events that you played brilliantly uh in in the month See, of september it it benefited you So now instead of talking about one event we talk about two two events. No, I would have loved if we would have broken up like at that point like Tata Steel uh interview and this but I think uh, at that point you were so busy it was almost impossible yeah. uh to do to do that interview but yeah I I enjoyed going through your games uh and also speaking to you on that wish you all the best Divya for the Thank next you. two events. Thank you.